Hey there. Welcome back to the Roving Sounds radio show, the podcast dedicated to researching, recording, and sharing traditional music from all around the world. My name is Ashley Deneef. Our focus for the last episode and this one is traditional Irish music. And if you're listening to us for the first time, I recommend you go back to our first episode, which covers the history and development of Irish music in a lot of detail. This episode is going to focus on some musical details, and fair warning, there is a little bit of music theory jargon in here. But there's also plenty for non-music nerds to enjoy too, and we'll be covering things like the two main similarities in all Irish music, how to listen to Irish music and what to listen for, typical instruments, common tune types, and hearing some great recordings along the way. Some of those recordings today are provided by Cultus Keltry Erin, a really important organisation that preserves Irish music and culture. There's also a companion blog post to go with this episode, which has heaps of extra content, including a listening guide and a few videos, and you can find the link to that in the episode description. If you're really digging this podcast and the entire Roving Sounds project, then please jump onto our mailing list. You'll receive exclusive videos and recordings that only subscribers receive. Today, it's a cool little performance from our Ilan piping friend, John Devine, as well as my favourite recordings from my trip in Ireland. You can find the link in the episode description and also on the website. Now, a quick apology before we get on with the show. Last week, I pronounced John's name incorrectly, and he very nicely pointed out that it's John Devine, not John Devon. So big apologies to John. We obviously didn't offend him too much, because he's going to be back today to help us out again. But first, let's get in the right mood. So here's another recording from my trip in Ireland. This one was recorded in a session in Dublin. There are two broad categories of Irish music. There's instrumental music and vocal music, and they both share two really important similarities. If you're going to remember anything from this episode, I really hope it's these similarities, because they'll really help you understand the music better. So number one, all Irish music was originally performed by one musician only. The solo performer would play the melody of the piece unaccompanied, And all Irish music stems from this idea of one musician playing one melody by themselves. Even when you have a group of musicians playing together, the melody line and how it's played is what's really important. Any chords, percussion or other accompaniment is secondary. Number two, all Irish folk music is about subtlety. What's exciting about this music isn't grand key changes or intricate rhythms, but instead it's the really small nuances and how a performer controls them. These nuances are like the moments of self-expression for a performer, and compared to a style like jazz, where the self-expression is mainly heard in long solos, Irish music is pretty specific about when these moments come. Irish melodies repeat a lot in performance, meaning the performers are given many opportunities to vary how they play each melody. Being able to identify how and where a musician interprets a melody is really hard, but that's what I want to help you get towards. Not because this is the academically correct thing to do, but just because I think this is where the really interesting parts of Irish music are. With that in mind, let's have a look at the instrumental music. Instrumental Irish music of the last 400 years was originally performed to accompany dancing. As we covered in the last episode, Irish dancing lost popularity around the mid-1930s and the music gained some independence. But the music they played at this time 
was the same music they used to play to accompany dancers. And this means a couple of things. Firstly, rhythm is incredibly important. You know, every change, it should be about the rhythm, really. You know, it should be, you know, as we were saying earlier about social dance, you know, the idea was that you inform the dancer of where the, mm-hmm. where the beat is, where the one is. If you didn't recognise him, that's John Devine from the last episode. Do you remember the nice guy whose name I stuffed up? As we know that Irish music was only performed by one instrument, the rhythm of the melody became very important for ensuring dancers could feel the pulse, which is why Irish melodies have this feeling of relentless movement. And secondly, there are many different types of dance, each with different tempos and a different number of steps, which means that there are many different types of pieces to accompany these dances. So what kinds of instruments do we frequently hear in Irish music? When you see a performance or a session, you're going to see a combination of traditional instruments and some recent additions. So first, here are some of the common traditional ones. The fiddle is one of the most iconic Irish instruments, and despite its name, it's just a typical orchestral violin played in a different style. Various types of accordion are also common. Accordions were only invented in Germany in the 1800s, but they spread really quickly around Europe. And you can hear them in the folk music of lots of different countries, like Poland, Czech Republic, France, etc. Now, my favourite Irish instrument, the illan pipes. The illan pipes are a type of bagpipe, and they make sound by pushing air across several reeds, like the way a saxophone does. These guys are really common in Irish music. Here's John explaining how they work. Yeah, well, the whole thing's driven from a bellows, which is under my right arm, strapped to my elbow. And then there's a pipe that connects that to the bag under my left arm. And that's where everything comes from. And, and really, the feat of engineering is that there's just one air source. You drive it from the bag, really. Mm-hmm. You inflate the bag from the bellows. But everything comes from the bag, so you keep that constant pressure on. The Illin pipes really are this big contraption you've got to strap yourself into. And you have to use both elbows, both hands, and a wrist to play them. So there's three parts to the instrument, really. There's the, there's the drone... So there's, there's, there's three canes all playing a D there. This set is in D. You can get them built in different keys, mm-hmm. but this set's in the key of D. The drone holds those three Ds underneath the melody, which is played on a wooden tube called a chanter. The chanter has holes cut into it, and it makes sound when your fingers lift off a hole. And then, of course, the, the other addition is these, uh, these regulators. They're, they're, they're like chanters with keys on that, that sit under my hand that I can... Um, Supposedly, I mean, it's a very advanced technique. Mm-hmm. Play a kind of chordal accompaniment to myself. The Illan pipes come from the same family as the Scottish Highland bagpipes, but they're slightly different. I'll be sending out a video of John performing a type of piece called an air to all Roving Sound subscribers this week, and it really gives you a good idea of how the pipes look and work. So if you're not yet a subscriber, now's your chance. Now, with the modern instruments, there's a really broad and helpful generalisation. Any instrument that plays chords in Irish folk music has been recently added, probably in the 1960s and 70s. This includes guitars, mandolins, pianos and bazookis, which are a Greek stringed instrument. Another instrument that's been recently added is the bauron. The bauron is a small handheld drum that didn't come into Irish music until the revival of the 1960s. It's pretty common to see these at sessions, but sometimes they're not so welcome. Apparently, this is because amateur baron players have a tendency to, well, ruin the music. You can see a good baron player, however, on our Inside the Session video contained in our blog post. Now, if you're like me, then a lot of instrumental Irish music will sound kind of similar to you. One thing that helps understand the music is knowing about the different types of tune. Knowing about the different tune types is like unlocking a different part of the music. Suddenly the melodies become much clearer, and it brings all the other stuff around it into focus as well. 
So here's an overview of the main tune types in Irish music. As we go, John is going to play you an example to show you the differences. This is by no means an exhaustive list. First we have reels, which are the most common type of piece, and they are in 4-4. Reels are played with straight eighth notes and are often fast. Next are horn pipes, and these are also in 4-4, but they're swung, and the swing is really skippy. We also have jigs and slip jigs. Jigs are sometimes called double jigs. They're in 6-8, and they kind of sound like old sea shanties. And slip jigs are in 9-8. That sounds kind of confusing, I know. I think a simpler way of thinking about it is that they're in 3-4 with a triplet subdivision. There's heaps of other styles of Irish music, including polkas, mazurkas, slides, and more. We're not going to cover them because it'll take too much time, but the four that we have covered, you'll hear a lot. As we talked about last time, it's easiest to hear Irish music in pub sessions, where musicians hang out, drink, and play some music. In these sessions, musicians will play repertoire that they all know, and the music is grouped into sets of three tunes, usually of the same type. These tunes are played one after the other without break, and the musicians use body language to signal when they're going to change for the next tune. As John said last week, Way back, it was a solo pursuit. It was something you did on your own. So how did it change from solo music to group music? The pieces being played are the same pieces that will be played solo, and in a session, most of the musicians will play that melody together. However, the problem with this is that Irish folk music is an oral tradition, and all repertoire and style is conveyed through listening and copying, not through reading and writing. Over time, these tunes have spread across the world and changed significantly because there's no definitive written version of each one. So when musicians play together, the result will be several different interpretations played simultaneously. I think of it as like a giant game of Chinese whispers. In many other styles of music, these problems would be a big enough reason to arrange a rehearsal but Irish music embraces these differences in interpretation. In fact, it comes back to what we were saying about the nuances being the exciting bits. When one person plays a melody, the variations are clear and obvious, but in a session where three or more people are playing the melody together, the combination of all these different versions creates a conflicting and interesting sound. The differences become the things to pay attention to when listening to Irish music, because for a few brief moments in each tune, each musician's individuality can be heard. I saw a really great example of this the other day in a performance by the Irish Folk Orchestra. The orchestra is maybe a 50-piece group with all the common instruments you'd see in a normal Irish session, just in larger numbers. There are about 20 fiddles, and what was cool was that they all played the same melodies but with totally different bowing patterns. In a classical orchestra, each violin will play a melody in exactly the same way so that they make a unified sound, but in the Irish Folk Orchestra, they didn't bother to work that stuff out. They just celebrated their differences. I want you to be able to hear this effect. So here's a recording, not from the Irish Folk Orchestra, but from that session in Doolan. Try and listen for the moments when the melody instruments deviate from each other.
Sometimes in a pub session, a musician will play an air. Airs are really slow and expressive pieces, and they're a musician's chance to shine. Airs are often based on Irish language vocal songs, which have been adapted for instruments, and they come from a style of singing known as Shan Nos. By the bright bay of Dublin, whilst carelessly strolling, I Shan no singing is the core of the second type of Irish music. It's vocal music. In English, Shan Nose translates to the old style, and the songs are sung a cappella and in Irish. Shan no songs often set a scene or a character's point of view in a folk tale, and sometimes the singer will introduce the song by telling the tale first. These songs are usually about the classic themes, love and betrayal but there are also often metaphors for the political and religious struggles that Ireland was going through at the time of writing. Like Ayres, Shan Nos pieces are sung out of time, and again, the interest isn't in big changes, but it's in how the singer emphasises certain words and plays with the melody. Shan Nos performances sometimes happen in pub sessions, but no more than once or twice per night, and it's more common to hear these in a home session or at a Shan Nos specific venue. If you get a chance to see a performance, you get to see how incredibly open and sparse the delivery is. The singers don't usually interact with the audience or use body language at all to tell the story, so they just rely upon the lyrics and the melody to carry its weight. I find this style of singing can be confronting at times because it's so bare and vulnerable, and that makes me feel vulnerable as an audience member. We're going to feature a track now that I didn't record. This track was loaned to us by Cultus Kiltry Aaron, that organisation that preserves music in Ireland we talked about last time, and they've allowed me to to use a track from one of their CDs. The CD is called Echoes of Aaron, and the track is called The Blackbird of Sweet Avondale. Now, this is not a perfect example of the Shannon style because she's singing in English, but everything else from the delivery, the tempo, the lyrics, they're all spot on for Shannon's, and it'll give you a good idea of what the style is about. The fowlers will hit him in hopes to ensnare him. While I hear in sorrow his absence be sure it grieves me to think. That the walls of Kilmainham surround my poor black bird of sweet Avondale. The cold prison cell is no habitation. For one from his country who fought loyal and true, so give him his freedom without hesitation. And remember, he fought hard for old Ireland and you. Shannon's singing is probably the oldest continuous form of music that Ireland has today. For musicians, this means that it holds the most authenticity as a musical style, and it's seen as the key to unlocking how to perform both instrumental and vocal music in a truly Irish way. I hope this episode has been enjoyable and interesting to listen to. If you've liked it, there are three things you can do which would be super helpful. You can share it with a friend, you could leave an iTunes review, and you can get on our mailing list, and I'll send you some more great stuff. Don't forget to visit the companion blog post, which has a listening guide, further musical information, and our Inside the Session video. I'll leave you today with another great recording I collected in Ireland. Until next time, bye. Bye.